term Agile Pillars comes from the four core values listed in the Agile Manifesto. Those values are individuals and interactions over processes and tools, working software over comprehensive documentation, customer collaboration over contract negotiation, and responding to change over following a plan. The authors of the manifesto intended for these core values to help guide teams as they navigate their work, and they have. The Agile pillars have been at the center of many successful Agile implementations and have helped countless organizations build better software faster. However, the Agile pillars are not to be confused with the pillars of Scrum established in the Scrum Guide, which are adaptation, transparency, and inspection. The intent was for the pillars of Scrum to act as a set of guiding principles that would enhance the effectiveness of sprint planning, daily scrums, sprint reviews, and retrospectives. But when it comes to unlocking true business agility, we believe there are three things even more essential to your success than anything you'll find in the manifesto or scrum guide. Because in the absence of these three things, nothing else in Agile works. Transformation is fundamentally about three things. Transformation is about forming teams. It's about building backlogs and having the ability to produce working tested software. We have to have complete cross-functional teams. So what is a complete cross-functional team? It's not a group of people working on a project. It's not a group of people dedicated to a project. It is that, but it, that's not it in its entirety. It's a group of about six to eight people, maybe it's 12, maybe it's four, right? Not being super dogmatic about that, that have ownership over their technology stack and are focused at a well-identified business problem. Backlogs is the next piece. Most organizations don't build backlogs the way backlogs were intended to be built. Backlog items are things that are a day or two big, right? You can start to measure the completion of them through the life of the sprint. They're very specific. They have acceptance criteria, right? You could use Bill Wake's um, invest model, independent, negotiable, valuable, estimatable, small, testable. Um, I think it was Ron Jeffrey's card conversation confirmation, right? There's lots of different ways of thinking about user stories or backlog items. But backlog items are discrete. They're interchangeable. They're clear. You can exit a sprint planning meeting and the team has clarity on what it's going to be able to commit to over the course of the next couple weeks. Most organizations do not put the time or energy necessary to build backlogs. If we do not form teams that are encapsulated and we don't give those teams clear backlogs, then that team <clears throat> will never be able to produce a working tested you know, increment of the product in some sort of stable velocity kind of way. The magic of Agile, right, that, that separates, in my opinion, Agile from total chaos, is if I know the size of my backlog, I know the velocity of my team, I get to a definition of done at the end of every sprint, then I can start to measure how much of the backlog I'm gonna get through when my time runs out, or I can tell you how many sprints it's gonna take to get through it. Okay, so if you can't put together backlogs, if you can't form complete cross-functional teams, and then the last bit, right, if you can't get to a working tested increment of software at the end of the sprint, then Scrum's not gonna work. When you start to think about Agile at scale, Agile at scale is really about networks of teams. Um, oftentimes I'll refer that to that as the structure of the organization. Um, and then it's like, how do you get those teams to operate on strategically aligned backlogs, right? So if you have um, 10, 15, 20, 100 teams, that we know that the work of all of those individual teams is gonna roll up to enterprise objectives, right? So strategically aligned backlog really becomes a governance conversation, right? How do we do cross-team decision-making? And then the idea of metrics, how do we produce working tested software across multiple teams at scale, what I've kind of historically talked to about that is metrics, right? Because what we're really dealing with when we have multiple teams that are all producing working tests and software, especially in the presence of dependencies, we're dealing with integration type issues, right? So we're looking for things like flow and bottlenecks, right? We're looking for ways to start to have conversations for how to measure progress across multiple teams because working tests and software in the small doesn't necessarily always imply working test of software in the large. And so we want to have appropriate metrics, right? So we're going to talk about how 
forming teams, building backlogs, and producing working tested software leads to an enterprise class conversation around structure, governance, and metrics. Because if we can get teams, complete cross-functional teams, operating off of really, really clear backlogs, able to produce a working tested increment of software at the end of every sprint, we win in the small. If we can get networks of teams that all work together, very dependency aware, cross-cutting concern aware, they're coordinated by a lean agile governance model, and we have metrics that measure the actual flow of value across those networks of teams operating within a governance model, that's fundamentally what we're doing.